So you want to make a character. And what is it for? Is it for fun or for work? If it's for work, then you have some limitations, of course, but for both of them, all you need is inspiration. Where do you get this inspiration from? Everywhere, because everything can be a character. No matter if it has little facial expressions or no expressions at all, or if it's just um, a bit special. For this, I like to think about three elements, plan, reference, and concept. All these elements can be swapped, but I like to start with planning. For example, the shape. Is it a tall character? Is it a small character? The shape will define its personality as well. Is it organic? It has like actual muscles or fur, or it's just a rigid or metallic, non-moving or a bit moving character. Does it move? Does it move fast? Does it move slow? Does it have uh, wheels or legs? Or maybe it floats. Is it real? Because you can say, okay, I want to make a dog, but yeah, what kind of dog, you know? Or maybe we want to make a cool dog. It all makes a big difference. So why making all this planning? Well, because when you look for reference, which is our next step, it's going to be much, much easier for you. And reference helps you get the proportions right, shapes, materials and textures, and the animation, which is really, really, really important. For example, let's see Kodo. Kodo is a organic quadrupt a real, that's important, and a camelid. So it has a family of other animals close to him. When I was uh, looking for Koro, well, I like this character because he lives in Patagonia, where I am from, really in the south of South America. Uh, so I could have a lot of reference. Then I found one picture of the bones that was also really important to, to model him. I was lucky because I got access, my sister got these pictures of one that they found in the in the fields, all abandoned, and they feed them, and then they will release them, of course. But you can, I also tried going in the fields and try to get close to one. I just made this for fun. I didn't get that close. But if you don't have access to that, you can go to a zoo or a zoologic, or you can check for their family. Like if I didn't have a picture of, uh, if I didn't have reference of uh, an actual guanaco, I would go for a llama, a camel, an alpaca. And once you get all this, it's nice to go and try to make a little concept of your character. And most people always ask, like, do I need to know how to draw? No, of course not. Do you like to draw? That's the actual question. Because that way you can start making little doodles, making little uh, sketches of your own character and try to give your own personality and your own and your own style. So you know a little bit of the proportions. You can change shapes. You can try bigger eyes, smaller eyes, more arms, less, um, whatever. Just go and do it on paper. It's really, really simple. You don't need to know how to draw. You have to lose that fear and just go and try something. So if you don't feel comfortable by drawing, you can always try a collage. It's really handy. You can just crop parts of images or you can even do it on actual paper, try to get a magazine, cut and make your own character out of other characters, which is always a good practice. And it's a great inspiration as well. So that said, I hope you now feel like, hey, I'm going to make my own character, I'm going to think about it, the shape, proportions, colors, it's real, this is not, it's fantasy or not, just go and give it a try. Cheers. Cheers.